From the professional perspective, um, I'm a journalist and a copywriter. I uh, uh, worked as a journalist um, for 10 years in Russia before I moved to Sweden. And in Sweden I started to work more as a freelance copywriter and uh, uh, I've started my, uh, my own company in uh, 2012 dealing with the design and copywriting and web design and other things. Um, it's a kind of discrimination and alienation of um, LGBT people. And it's not like uh, um, uh, a recent political decision, it's also related to the uh, Russian mentality as it is. Um, and uh, intolerance to someone who is different. I'm not claiming that, um, I'm not trying to uh, judge the Russian society uh, as it is, uh, but this is what I've noticed since um, being a kid. When you don't follow what the society tells you, even when it comes to school, like when everyone is going um, together with the teacher to the countryside to um, pick up potatoes and you are not following, then it's wrong because why should you do something different uh, that the society is doing? And uh, if everyone is attending physical training lessons and you don't want, then um, it's also wrong. So there's a... Not to follow the mainstream. And if LGBT is not a mainstream, that, of course, it... Um, it is excluded gradually from the discourse and from the activities. And uh, even um, when I uh, like read the uh, scientific books and um, um, school books about something, when it was uh, described um, how people might be defined, uh, what are the main categories to define people. It was um, listed there that people might differ in terms of color of their skin, of their nationality, of their religion, gender, dot. So there is no anything else. Uh, no mention of sexuality. No, yeah, and this is the main actually uh, peculiarity of the uh, attitude towards uh, LGBT issues. They're just not mentioned and if someone um, occasionally uh, says out loud something related to it, the others try to keep silence and um, this is how that person who is mentioning this understands that, oh, I have probably done something wrong, I shouldn't mention it, otherwise they will look at me um, like um, I'm a weird person or something. There was now, uh, I think you saw in the media and the news that Putin was visiting Amsterdam and they put gay flags all over the city. Yeah, of course. I don't think it will have such a big impact on actually Putin or even changing the political direction. Mm. But uh, what do you think the West can actually do to influence uh. Russia and the politics? Actually, I had this discussion with a friend of mine who um, belongs to the LGBT network in St. Petersburg and she was one of those uh, people from the delegation who went to Amsterdam to hold that demonstration in front of that building where Putin actually was um, having a dinner or something. And I told her um, something that, well, I I'm afraid it's not gonna change his attitude, but at least I hope that um, you will spoil his dinner or something at least. Um, yeah, but to, to be serious, I think that um, the, um, the Russian government doesn't seem to be easy to change uh, its mind about anything. Um, or to change the agenda which has been set many years before. And uh, um, this uh, topic remains to be one of the more sensitive, so uh, I think uh, these actions are still important, although they probably shocked him for a short period of time, and he's uh, probably just considering those people um, 
as inadequate and doing something to uh, confuse him. And um, I think for the West it's difficult to do anything um, um, practical because uh, the Russian gas is involved and maybe this is the uh, issue which dominates the discourse. So um, the oh. economical uh, relationship uh, with Russia. So I think although the West might try to politely imply that, uh, the, uh, that Russia should change um, its policy towards uh, gay people, but uh, in practice I don't think it can be um, achieved in, um, in the next 10 years or something. Legal level, it, um, it might uh, help, uh, although I think it's not really possible in reality. Um, but the main problem is not the um, policy of the authorities, but the mentality of uh, the Russians itself. Because the society in general, um, I think, needs to be educated about the LGBT issues. And the, may, the main problem so far is that uh, as long as um, these uh, issues and uh, topics are severely uh, restricted and uh, excluded from the discourse, the society doesn't know that it's normal to be gay and um, um, for instance I remember when I was a kid and like I was probably six or seven and um, I was going somewhere with my mom and um, we lived like in a small uh, countryside place and uh, there were two women who lived together they were like over 40 or something and everyone uh, was gossiping about them like oh it's so strange two uh, women live together and no one actually uh, invited them you know to like home parties or anything and my mom pointed um, to them and she told me look uh, those are the ones who don't deserve to live and they should be shoot straight away or something. So even um, I was educated in a homophobic environment actually. That's why it was so difficult to accept uh, something within myself. And it's the same for many people because um, even the journalists who are supposed to be the most educated and open-minded about uh, Anything, um, I remember when I worked as an editor for Metro newspaper uh, in Moscow and um, once one of the journalists came up to the editor of another uh, publication within the uh, editorial office and he asked, are we gonna um, do something about that uh, demonstration uh, uh, which uh, the gays are holding somewhere in Moscow? And the editor said, um, why, why should we? And he also mentioned gays um, in a humiliating word. And he said, of course we are not going to cover this because it's uh, embarrassing, so just forget about it. And I think even if the journalists are um, uh, not willing to open up their minds, then it's uh, even more difficult for the society to accept this. Yeah. So, so you imagine like it would take 20 or 50 years before the society changes, or yeah. how will that change happen? I mean, this change has to start somewhere. Yeah, and I think it has already started as these events, um, like uh, during the weekend, um, are held, and uh, it's already discussed in the Russian media. And I think the more uh, relevant activities are held and discussed, the better it is. Because as long as it is, uh, it's not discussed, it's sick and uh, people consider it as sickness and um, people who are gays are afraid to open up because they are afraid to be socially punished and uh, the other part of society uh, still thinks um, it's something out of being normal. Okay, good. But feminism in Russia that often and because Mm, even feminism is considered um, as a word with a bit of negative connotation. Like, uh, 
according to the mainstream understanding, it's a woman who is uh, who hates men without no reason. So no one wants to be uh, defined like that. <laughs> and also, as feminism is equated with uh, uh, being a lesbian, so it's also, uh, as many people think, not really prestigious to be uh, known as feminist. So some people might express uh, the views which are um, feministic to some extent, but um, on the general level, I think feminism is mostly non-existent uh, in Russia. And the, this is the main difference, that uh, feminism exists in Sweden, but it's not really, it uh, doesn't really exist in Russia. And uh, also, um, the um, um, male society is not really tolerating this in general, uh, these kind of views. Mm. That's why I think for many women who consider themselves uh, more or less feminists, it's difficult to um, express their views because um, it might be problematic on the, in terms of uh, society. Because uh, men still define uh, most of the uh, agendas in the Russian society. That's why um, if you say you are feminist, it means that you go against the mainstream. And if you go against the mainstream, then uh, you are not welcome. Are there any women in power in Russia? I mean, there must be women in parliament and politicians or owning companies yeah. and so on. Yeah, there are quite many. And what do they do? What do they think about feminism or about women agenda or they just follow the, follow the society's uh, yeah, I, th there are quite many women who um, achieved success um, so far and even uh, when it was the, the Soviet Union, um, the state policy was to promote women and equality between men and uh, women. Um, but, for instance, the... what is her name? Um, the senator of uh, St. Petersburg and the region of St. Petersburg, which is called Leningradska Oblast. She's a woman and there are many deputies, uh, women also, many uh, ministers, uh, women. Um, although in the media they are always um, discussed, not only as politicians, but um, regarding their families, whether they have kids and something. So. Um, in the Russian society, uh, even if you are a, a businesswoman, uh, still uh, to match the successful image, you should have a husband and kids, um, preferably. And if you don't, then everyone is questioning whether you are a, uh, like a normal, normal woman. And uh, even the recent example, um, one. National Russian newspaper uh, asked me for the interview about my life in Sweden and uh, why I moved and about my studies and everything. And I mm, uh, answered their question that questions that I I've done this and that. I worked as a journalist and then I went to Sweden and I also studied and then I opened my company. And many people who commented on this article, uh, this interview. They started questioning, but what about um, your marital status? Are you married or what? And uh, how did you actually stay in Sweden? Um, did you get married to a Swede? And then I said, no, I didn't. I just uh, opened my company. This is how I stayed there. And then the, the question was, but are you going to get married finally? So it was quite fun to read these comments. And also many people wrote, Yes, uh, it's, it's good that you change your life, it's good that you uh, move to another country, but think, you are 30 and it's, uh, you are losing your time, you should get married soon and have kids. This is what a proper woman should do, this is her aim in, in life, stuff like that. So I think um, this notion is preventing from feminism to be uh, uh, spread.
um, in so the society. Strong traditions about family life and a woman's place. Yeah, is because a woman's, woman's is place is quite well defined. And mm. So a woman is not a woman unless she has yeah. a husband and children. Yeah. That's the most important social status. Yeah. And then exactly. education or work or whatever. And yeah, and if you uh, continue studying, then everyone is saying, oh, poor her, she is probably is trying to forget that she uh, that she's not married yet and she's trying to like occupy herself with something else but obviously she's unhappy so uh, the the only thing she can do is continue studying so for me the most important thing is not to reduce myself to what i'm expected to be and uh, what i'm known to be good at because there is uh, always a way to uh, open up to something new and grow into something else so people just shouldn't be afraid to explore themselves more because everything starts within ourselves and all the prejudice and uh, stereotypes are within us